really get that sense of passing through the outer wall of the City of London here, just as we uh, head towards the Barbican, having just passed the original site of Aldersgate and the old Roman wall that cut through here. We're going out into the bad lands beyond. And there is a fortification theme to today's walk. Uh, th this fact I start here, uh, passing through Aldersgate through the old Roman wall, is purely coincidental. It's the nearest tube station. The walk we're going to do today is to follow a section of the old Civil War defences of London, the parliamentary defences that ran all the way from Wapping in the east up north to Black Mary's Hole, which is where we'll be going today on the walk, then all the way west across Oxford Street, round to Vauxhall Bridge, then all the way back round to Bermondsey via Elephant and Castle. We're only going to do one short section of that, and this is the section that starts up here, and we're going to go to the very first of the Civil War fortifications that were built by the parliamentarians to defend London. This is a very special walk for me. I first did this one evening, in, I think it was in 2004, 2005, after reading an article in the uh, Architects Association magazine by a guy called Guy Manzaba, and it's a brilliant article. I'll try and find a link to it, but I don't think it's online anymore. It's called Forting. And he makes a connection between the Civil War fortifications and all of that that it kind of um, represented in a way that kind of there was a, a utopian almost element of the, of the Civil War project as a revolutionary element to it, I guess. And what later came in the London Borough of Finsbury with, well, I wouldn't say very practical approaches to improving the life of the people in the old London borough of Finsbury. It's interesting resonances. We'll talk about some of that on the route. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely connection to make. So we're going to head up here to Goswell Road and to the site of Mount Mills Fort. Wow. Well, and once you see those kind of traces of utopianism in the historic landscape, you start to see it echoed in the present day, like here in the Barbican Estate which had slightly, you know, if you like, I'm not sure utopianism would be the right word, but they had a very strong idea about urban living here, didn't they? What they were trying to design a type of life. Blake Tower, presumably named after the great visionary William Blake, a man who believed in all kinds of other ideas and visions of London. We saw pillars of gold on the, on the fields between Islington and Marylebone a new Jerusalem. We've always found this an intriguing little corner here between sort of Baltic Street West and Sycamore Street. We've got this little tree here, which is obviously a survivor of a previous streetscape on the edge of what would have been quite a dark and industrial area. This is Sycamore Street here. This is Crescent Row. You know what, I don't know if I've been down Crescent Row before. These streets are actually best explored at night time. That's when they really come alive and release their atmospheres. This isn't actually the route I have planned today. I'm just following this because I'm pretty sure I haven't been down here before. We can, it will take us to the same place. And it's brought us out into uh, Domingo Street. We're just off of Old Street here. It's a fascinating nest of streets. And look, you can see up there evidence of once when this was uh, workshops and warehouses. The old hoist up there in the loading door. And just on the other side of Old Street there you've got the cycling themed coffee bar, Look Mum No Hands. It's a nice place there actually. It's, I know some of you think that's kind of like almost like a hipster parody but it's not. It's actually uh, you can take your bike in there to get fixed and uh, it's good. It's good coffee, good sandwiches. 
And this walk today links together with a number of other walks that I've done over the last couple of years that I'll list below. The, the Little Italy walk, the walk uh, through Clerkenwell, the, the walk I did around Bunhill Fields, the, also the walk I did around Charterhouse Square, and what else? The Guildhall walk, the Roman Wall walk, and uh, there's others as well. I'll list them all below. The River Fleet walk. You can see they all kind of connect together. And we're back on Goswell Road now. It's a late afternoon, it's coming up for about 10 past three. The clocks went back last night, so sunset today is at 4.38, which is alarming, isn't it? It suddenly plunged into winter, despite the fact it's uh, unseasonably mild. So here you've got the old London Borough Finsbury signage. So the Ivy House pub here on the corner of Seawood Street is, I think it's had a bit of work done it since I did that original walk and that original blog post in 2005, which of course I will link to below. Because at that point I say it's the kind of pub you'd only go into if you're really desperate for a pint. Bearing in mind I used to go into every pub in the area at that time. And this trendy coffee shop here, Goswell Road Coffee, obviously wasn't here as well. All right, if we turn in Seaward Street, we should find our first Civil War fortification, Mount Mills. So this site here is still called Mount Mills, which is interesting when you think about it, that it's retained the name, because I don't think there's a... Is there an address here? It's just the back of the pub, the back of some buildings, isn't it? It's still called Mount Mills, and we'll walk up uh, there into that little car park, and you can see there it does occupy high ground. You can see the rise in the ground from here actually. It was not long after the start of the English Civil War that the parliamentarians realised they had to kind of build some sort of enclosure, some sort of fortification to protect London from the Royalists. So they started in 1642 and then in 1643 they realised they needed something a bit more substantial. And this here, Mount Mills, was the first fort to be built and then they were linked together by what they called lines of communication, which were deep trenches about three yards wide. And in some cases further along, they were covered as well, linking together the sites. Here, Mount Mills would originally have been a site, had been a, a, burial, a burial place, it had been a plague pit, it had been a, a site of a windmill, and it had also been a public lay stall, which is basically a dung heap. You can see, look, from where I'm stood, you're definitely looking down. There's definitely a mound up here. So this car park here behind the flats marks the, the highest point of the mound. I suppose I wonder if there are still bodies buried here from when it was a plague pit and just a burial pit. A map of the fortifications was produced by George Virtue and published in 1738. I think it's called something like an explanation of the fortifications on the line of communication. So you can see already they were tracking what were already relics, I guess by that point, of, of recent history. And then some of these were drawn by the great Wenceslas Holler. That's a difficult name, isn't it? Wenceslas Holler, who did various kind of sketches and views of London. And he did draw some of the, the trenches that were still running through the fields of Islington. I think not so much here, but further up towards sort of Barnsbury, Pentonville. So the line of communication ran from Mount Mills Fort across what's now Goswell Road to the next fort was Waterfield Fort which is on the site of the Spa Green Estate. I believe it ran along Sebastian Street. So that's where we go next. Kennedy's of Goswell is a really good chippy. I used to sometimes stop and get chips from there on my way back home when I lived up at the Angel. Looking uh, east along Lever Street here, it reminds me that I, you know, I had originally planned to walk the route from whopping uh, to here but um, there's some, been some debate about the route on that eastern section particularly through Whitechapel so there's an article in London Archaeologist that I haven't digested yet so I have to walk it in stages now that I'm doing this bit. So 
So a deep trench, three yards thick and twice as deep, ran along here, ran along Sebastian Street and across what is uh, today Northampton Square, bound for Waterfield Fort, which was one of the uh, largest on the line of communication. I think it had the largest court de gare, as recorded at the time. A substantial amount of the original buildings in uh, Sebastian Street were, were bombed during the Second World War, as was a lot of Clerkenwell and Finsbury, it was very heavily bombed. Here are some of the original buildings in Sebastian Street. This is what the whole street probably would have looked like before the Second World War. So here's Northampton Square in the centre of the square with the bandstand. That's built over the original trench, the line of communication linking the forts together. This was built in the uh, in 1800, in the early 1800s. I'm guessing the name is from the um, Earl of Northampton. I think it was Spencer Compton. You see lots of mentions of Compton and Northampton around the around Islington. They owned lots of land here. And these are said to be some of the original plane trees from the planting in 1800. And you've got the lovely bandstand there in the middle of the square. On the far side, you've got the modern building. There is, uh, is City University. Now we head along St John Street following the line of communication to Waterfield Fort, which stood on the site which is today occupied by the Spa Green Estate. So Waterfield Fort was the largest fort on this particular section of the line of communication. It had the, the largest um, yeah, cohort of guards. I was, trying to imagine, I was trying to remember the original wording, which I can't because it was French, but it was recorded by a guy called Lithgow, contemporary chronicle of the defences here. But and then after some point in the, in the 18th century, it became a famous pleasure garden. The Spa Green Estate behind me, which is on that site, is named after that, Islington Spa. Originally, it was called New Tunbridge Wells because that was the most fashionable and famous pleasure garden of its time, where people went to drink the waters. And this became such a rival to Tunbridge Wells that it changed its name to make it distinct, the Islington Spa. Princess Amelia and uh, Queen Caroline visited in 1733 that led to a huge wave of people coming here. I'm not sure I would have fancied the waters though because it said that they had to be diluted because at their full strength they induced vertigo and somnolence, which doesn't sound like a desirable outcome from a glass of water, does it? The Spa Green Estate, which occupies the site today, was designed by the architect Bertold Lebetkin, who emigrated to London from the Soviet Union in the, in the early 30s. First stone was laid by Nurin Bevin in 1946 after the war, so there was a lot of optimism, the rebuilding of London and of Britain after the war. So Spa Green Estate was meant to embody that modernist idea that you could design life, a design for living, to build really good quality homes for working people. And although the plans were made by the radical Finsbury Borough Council before the war, work didn't start until 1946. And it included a number of quite, um, quite high quality features that you would find, say, in like, quite expensive private apartments were incorporated here. I think they had kind of the very first, I think, waste disposal units in kitchens. They had kind of wood block flooring, which I think still exists in a number of the flats. And you can see the heritage of the, of the site is reflected in the uh, names of the houses, Wells House and Tunbridge House. From Rosebury Avenue, you really get a view of the, the kind of the curvature of this particular block here. And I really like these waves that he's put into the architecture. It's really quite beautiful. And I believe this is all like original features from the 1940s, started in 1946, I think completed in 1948 and it became a listed building in the 1990s. And interestingly, given the themes of today's walks of enclosure, of fortification, one of the um, etymologies of Islington, Ishul Dun, is meant to be a fortified enclosure in ancient British. So all these echoes pass down through time. Got this little green space here, Spa Green. You've got the spa green fields just down there, which I covered in my um, Little Italy in the Legends of Islington walk, so I won't repeat myself. I'll link to that below. That was a site of many kind of radical gatherings, a site with a very storied history. 
And over the road there, you have the Saddler's Wells Theatre here on Rosebury Avenue, site of another well. I mean, this area was full of wells and springs, but that was another celebrated pleasure garden there, the Saddler's Wells, and also one of the potential sites for Merlin's Cave. After passing across Spa Green, or what's today Spa Green, the line of communication would have passed around, I would have thought passed around rather than passed through, the new river head reservoir which is, which is on this site here because that was established in 1613 so a good sort of like 30 years before the works on the enclosure on the defences took place of course the new river is a walk I mean to do one day and a scheme that I'm um, still used today an aqueduct to bring fresh drinking water into London traveling 28 miles from just outside Ware in Hertfordshire made the people that invested in it became unimaginably rich and you see their names all around Islington and this building here was originally the uh, Thames Water headquarters and it was converted into apartments I don't know about 20 odd years ago I guess I believe there is still the, the wood panelled room from the original New River Company I don't know whether that's true or not but that was the sort of the boardroom of Thames Water at one point Something I've, I've never done is visit the old pump house. I'm not sure if it's the original 17th century pump house, but it's certainly one of the old pump houses associated with the new river head. It's, I think it's located in that building through there and they do have open days. I've never been. In 20 years of fascination with this site, I've never been there once. And I think this is the building that contains the old original new river company um, boardroom, wood panelled boardroom. That could, I can't remember where I read that, could be complete nonsense, like a lot of what I say, but it's, it's lodged in my mind and it's not going anywhere. I think I made a mistake there actually, I don't think the line of communication would have come near the New River Head, it was, at the other fort was down here at the sorting office, I lost my bearings, so it's further down Rosebury Avenue near the uh, Mount Pleasant sorting office. Pinder's Fort, I think it was known as. Or Wakefield Fort, I'm not sure. I'll correct that when I get there. So there was a, a further trench, a covered walkway, a covered trench that ran off the main line of communication and cut up here, which is today Amwell Street, and ran to another fort that sat at the top, which is where we'll end, the Fort Royal. We'll, we'll go down to um, Mount Pleasant, then we'll come back and finish at the Fort Royal. It's a good place to finish, isn't it? So our next fort was here. And what today is Mount Pleasant sorting office. This was Wakefield Fort or, or Pinder's Fort. Mount Pleasant being an ironic name because it, it was another dung heap, another massive dung hill that was here. And the soldiers apparently used to camp in the fields to the north where there used to uh, be archery on the fields of Islington. And it's also a site of duelling as well. This became, later on, it became a uh, cold bath prison, quite a notorious prison. And the original sorting office here was hit by um, an incendiary bomb during the war and burnt down. But it's uh, an incredible location, Mount Pleasant, one of the most important nodal points in London. And the big sorting, and there's an under, well, it's underground, it was famous for its underground railway, which for a long time was a secret underground railway. But today you can travel on it from the uh, post office museum. This is looking down the street called Mount Pleasant from the high ground. It's clear that I suppose the fort would have sat here on this high ground, but the, the low point there, you can see in Mount Pleasant in Black Mary's Hole, that's where the River Fleet would have flowed through. So the fort would have stood on high ground above the fleet, which is another interesting feature. And I guess the, fort, the line of communication heading west must have crossed the River Fleet at the bottom of the hill here. So we'll now climb back up the hill, back up Rosebury Avenue, and walk up that old covered walkway, that covered trench to the Fort Royal up at Isheldun, the enclosure, the fortified enclosure. It's, I love this walk every bit as much now as when I first did it 17, 18 years ago. Okay, now we ascend Amwell Street, one of my, one of my favourite streets in London. Mm -hmm. 
So at the top of Amwell Street, we have uh, Claremont Square here, which was, I guess, roughly where the site of the um, of Straws Fort or the Fort Royal today. Just to the right of the frame there is the new Riverhead Upper Reservoir. Not sure when that was built, but obviously after the fort was here. And the Fort Royal was said to be an elaborate fort with eight angles and a spacious interlacing distance between each of the covered bulwarks. It said it had marvellous conspicuous and perspective for both the city and country, commanding all the other inferior fortifications near and about that part of the enclosing ground. Because of course the natural topography here places it on a very sort of commanding position over the Fleet Valley and looking down into the city. It's also the site of myth and legend. I'll link you below, though, to my uh, Islington video that talks about this, about this being the head of the sacred mound, the Penton Mound, principal observatory of uh, New Troy, Care Troy, and all that lovely, beautiful bit of mythology, London mythology. But that's another video. It's not part of the uh, story of the Civil War falsification. Well, up here at the Fort Royal, the top of Amwell Street on the Penton Mound is the perfect place to conclude this walk along the Finsbury Forts, the utopian enclosure, Guy Mans Abbott's utopian enclosure. I'll put various links below because I'm not sure I've done a particularly good job of delivering the information on this walk, but hopefully it gives you a taste of some of the stories that are here connected to the Civil War and linking a little bit to the, uh, the post-war architecture around the Spa Green Estate. Um, there's lots of other videos that relate to it that have sort of like the history of Islington and kind of the wells and the springs, the fleet. Uh, those are the two, Little Italy and the Legends of Islington video and the River Fleet video particularly give you more background to this area. Beyond its Civil War history, it's just a fascinating period, isn't it, of English history, the, the time of the English Civil War and uh, the parliamentarian city. Fascinating era and uh, this is just one small snippet of it. I'll have to walk the rest of them and, be, and uh, yeah, it's quite, I can't believe I was even thinking of trying to do that in one go from Wapping to Bermondsey via Vauxhall Bridge and all the rest of it. Thank you as ever for joining me on this walk. Look, we're in winter light now. It's not even five o'clock, but it's probably just about five o'clock. I'm going to use a light on top of my camera. It's a sobering moment, isn't it? There you go. Thank you. Have a great week and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. I wasn't thinking of doing it this week, this one, so, you know, the order could change. We could be down the Beverly Brook, we could be on the Quaggy, we could be in Soho, we could be in the city. Who knows?